Hey, everybody. Welcome to the, another episode of the Catholic Talk Show. We got a great show for you today. It's all about the mothers, man. It's going to be women who were Catholic saints and also mothers. Yeah, this is an honor of Mother's Day, so thank you all the moms out there. But we're going to talk about the mothers of saints. We're going to talk about women who uh, their sainthood is directly tied to motherhood, and we're going to talk about our own mothers. Love you, Mom, and every mother in throughout history. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. This is going to be a great episode. We're here with Ryan Scheel and Father Rich Pagano. Great to be in the studio with you guys. Yeah, me too. Yeah, great being here, guys. As always, Cast Media here in LA, and you know the Mother of Angels. You know this is a this is an awesome place of great devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Yeah, and I always think of the Blessed Mother whenever Mother's Day comes rolling around, and of yeah. course my mama. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, she she was the one who brought me up in the practice of the faith and was always a great example of prayer and the diligent efforts of going to church every single Sunday. She was a good mm-hmm. mama. Well, you guys yeah. are a bunch of mothers. Watch your mouth. <laughs> oh, only talking about my mama. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you talk about my mama. All right, well, now before we get start talking about uh, mothers who actually were also Catholic saints, I want to make sure to remind everyone to go to catholictalkshow.com. There you can subscribe to us on YouTube and Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and Stitcher and CastBox and Donner and Blitzen and all the services out there that you want to subscribe to. Uh, but make sure you also go to patreon.com forward slash the Catholic Talk Show and you can go there and you can support uh, the show. You can become a patron of ours and you can help make sure that we continue to uh, be able to produce these types of shows. And uh, they get a lot of great bonuses of diff- additional content, exclusive content, and really cool Catholic talk show uh, swag and all that kind of stuff. And if you don't, you're going to make all of our mothers cry because <laughs> all of our mothers are going to be sad when our show gets canceled because we can't afford to make it anymore. Mama, don't cry. Yeah, you can't. You can't have yeah, don't cry. It's Mother's Day. Don't make mothers yeah, cry. Just go, Mama, just go and do it. Ooh. <laughs> all right. So... <laughs> You know, motherhood is one of the most uh, beautiful, things. beautiful and fundamental things to humanity. Um, it's 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 elemental to humans is either mothers in their role as a mother or as children uh, having that understanding of motherly love. It's one of the most important things that human beings experience. Um, I think it's so important that our Lord recognized it and gave us his own mother. Uh, for us to have that perfect model of motherhood and someone that can mother us in the faith as well. Now, on today's episode, we're going to talk about Catholic saints who were actually mothers. Now, you think, well, Catholic saints, they're... Well, you uh, think about Joan of Arc. She wasn't or, a mom. Yeah, you know, you, you, you think about... Consecrated women. Yeah, consecrated religious, religious sisters, nuns, you know, and stuff Saint like Therese. That. Yeah. yeah. But these are actually women who had family. They had children. They had to yeah. tell their kids to eat their vegetables and clean up after themselves. They had to... Diapers. Yeah, they had to educate their children. They had to raise their children. They were living examples of of actual motherhood, and through their example were also saints. So the first one we want to talk about is one of the patron saints of mothers, and that is uh, St. Monica. Oh, yeah. Mother of St. Augustine. Reminds me of my mother. She prayed incessantly Mm -hmm. for me. The Basilica of St. Augustine in Rome actually houses her... Remains and there's a beautiful little altar nice. uh, dedicated to Saint Monica. Very, very fitting uh, that it would be near Piazza Navona and the beautiful basilica yeah. there in Rome. Yeah, yeah. and Saint she actually died just outside of Rome too. Well, what's her story Rome. though? I mean, she's a very motherly story, right? Well, Saint Monica. I mean, she was a Christian. She was married to a non-Christian. Uh, they, her and her husband had a son, Augustine, and he was a wild child. He was running around doing all kinds of. He was doing crazy things. craziness. Yeah, yeah, he was not. He was being one of us and. His mother, Saint Monica, prayed incessantly for his conversion. Mm-hmm. Prayed that he he find a Christian life. Prayed that he become the man that she wanted him so desperately to be. A saint. And through her constant intercession and her motherly prayers, her son d- did eventually become one of the the great saints of the entire history of the church. And her model of persistence in prayer for her child makes her one of the patron saints of mothers. Yeah, there's a scripture passage about that. 
being persistent in prayer. Mm -hmm. My mother definitely was very, very persistent in her prayers for me when I was going through my wild, wild phases and stages of my life. And when I was ordained for the Diocese of St. Augustine, for St. Augustine uh, in Florida, I celebrated my first mass out at the rustic altar that next morning in the Feast of Pentecost at sunrise. But the night of my ordination, we had a huge reception out at the mission grounds. And I, you know how you have a dance with your mother at your wedding kind of a thing. Well, I surprised my mom and I danced with her That's cool. out of the mission grounds underneath the moonlight and stuff. And, and, um, it was to the song of St. Augustine that references his mother's love. Cool. And, uh, yeah, it was really, really beautiful, beautiful song. Very That's cool. awesome. Yeah. So another mother that again, kind of in that same vein of mothers who, uh, their, their sainthood is a lot tied to their, the, uh, life of their son. So I don't think it'd be unfair to say that one of the most pivotal his characters in the history of Christianity is Constantine, his conversion and his legalization of Christianity and the remission of all the persecution of the early church really allowed the church to blossom. It allowed, uh, the theology and the structures of the church to grow to where it became a much more evangelical church to where it could reach all the corners of the earth. Now, Constantine, uh, during the Battle of the Melvian Bridge, had the great sign in the sky yeah. in Hux Signal Vinci's. Um, but that didn't come from nowhere. He didn't just immediately become aware of Christ through a vision in the sky. His own mother was a Christian, St. Helena. 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 Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, St. Helena, though... She did some awesome things. She did. Now, she's, she's one of my favorite saints, and she's after my own heart because she is the patron saint of archaeologists. Mm. And that's because when Constantine legalized Christianity, he allowed his mother, the Christian, to go and find the holy sites in the Holy Land. So she went on an archaeological expedition about 300 years after the life of Christ, and she went to un and found through local tradition and through the testimony of the people living in the areas, the Church of the Nativity, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the site of Golgotha. She even found the relic of the true cross. So that's why she has become the patron saint of archaeologists, is that her archaeological mission to Jerusalem, commissioned by her son, the emperor. Yeah, think about all the people that venerated, you know, or has have gone to the Holy Land just because of her preservation of these things yeah you mm -hmm. know and been absolutely blessed awesome. you know mm -hmm. or how many relics contain that are that are spread around the world yeah. you know remnants of that true cross mm -hmm. that she discovered mm -hmm. you know yeah. placed in altars and reliquaries around the world it's powerful yeah cool the cool stories that they found because people told them where they would essentially throw the crosses when they were done being used and the way that she discerned the true crosses that she would when she, she dug all up these crosses and there was a handful of them and she'd found local sick people and laid them on top of them and tested each one out. And then one particular one was healing everyone. And that's how they discerned the true cross. How cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, there really is. Mm -hmm. um, another mother now. So let's go on to another, another mother. Another mother. Yeah, My was... brother from another mother. <laughs> so... <laughs> Now, this one is a mother, and but she's also the patron saint of grandmothers, because we want to talk about grandmothers on Mother's Day, too, right? Mm -hmm. And the patron saint of grandmothers is Saint Anne. Anne. Ah, Anne. Yeah. my grandmother, her favorite saint to pray to was Saint Anne. Wow. And on her tombstone, she has, a, which was so hard to get, a, a medal of Saint Anne. You know how, like, they have yeah. fashion mm -hmm. things in there? Yeah. We, we were asking and begging, asking and begging, and finally they got it up there. That's cool. And I just went, just on February 15th, it's the anniversary of when my grandparents were married, and my grandfather was born on uh, Valentine's Day. So, you know, they got married the day after his birthday or whatever, mm. and so I went over there, and it was the first time I was able to see it mm. positioned on my grandmother's uh, tombstone. So yeah, it's so very cool. St. Anne, Saint is, Anne. she's Mary's mom, right? She's the yeah, mother yeah. of Mary, and yeah. Jesus' is grandmother. Oh, that's yeah. legit, man. That's yeah, awesome. She's really awesome saint, and uh, so cool. many grandmothers. So it's very important on Mother's Day to remember your grandmothers. Mm -hmm. And I, th I wouldn't think it's a stretch also to say that a lot of us out there owe in a very, mm. in a very um, way similar to St. Monica, we owe our continued faith to the prayers of our grandmothers. It's so true. This mm. rosary right here, 
is actually my great grandmother's that then was left to my grandmother, Ellen, which is out of Helen. Mm -hmm. My great grandmother's name was Helen. Um, so there's like little connections with St. Helen and whatnot, but, um, this was the rosary that she prayed with most of her life, this in a blue one. Mm -hmm. And this has my, this is my birthstone. And, um, this was left to me by my grandmother. And this was the rosary that was in her hands when she died and the rosary that was in her casket, um, for her funeral services and the one that I was able to get. And I use all the time, all the time now. Yeah. I, I think the person that had the biggest influence on my faith in my life was my grandmother. Yeah. Um, she prayed the rosary every single day, like clockwork, uh, for the conversion of Russia, like, you know, did the whole thing. And for the conversion of Ryan Scheel, my oh, grandson. Yeah. Um, <laughs> He's like Russia. <laughs> she made sure that all of us, uh, me and my brother and my sisters were able to go to Catholic school. Our parents couldn't afford it. We were poor. She made sure that she's like, Oh, John, make sure that they go to the Catholic school. I mean, she had the icons and everything. And I think that her faith uh, has matriculated down through our family. And to this day now, her great-grandchildren are um, still in the faith because of her prayers. And a lot of that kept us all close. So she's... Matriarch. Yeah, she really was mm -hmm. the, the the faithful matriarch of our family. And I, I'm sure if it were not for her, I would not still be Catholic. I feel, I feel the same way. I'll, I'll never forget. I was going through my wild days and I walked into my grandparents' house and I had these three gold chains and, and one of them I received from my, my father and the other two were attained by, uh, sinful means. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have had, um, those gold chains around my neck and other gold things like my gold watch. And like, here I come in like a Guido into the house, you know, and my grandmother looks at me and she says, you don't need three crosses around your neck. <laughs> you need one because there's only one real cross, you know? And that like it, it, she punched me in my face practically. Punched me in my face. And I needed it, man, because that really drove home a powerful message that, that I will never forget. And now I'm only wearing one cross. Just one? Just one. Come on. <laughs> well, you don't believe me? Go Guido, man. Come on, man. You need to and go And I actually Guido. moved, I moved from gold to silver. Oh, you need to go Guido. But this is from 1932. And on the back, it says, Cruzada de Amor a Jesus Crucificado, the crusade of love of Jesus the crucified. 1932 is the birth year of my grandparents, both my grandmother and my grandfather Sweet. and the recipients of their, you know, the faith. And um, this was given to me by a random person on the day that Pope Francis was visiting and addressing Congress for the very first time in the history of the church's relationship with America. And this was uh, delivered to me that interrupted me watching that, uh, you know, meeting and it was a very powerful mystical experience yeah. when I received this. But yeah. Yeah, you told me that story. I, I actually had a great grandma. She she died when she was in her 90s and she was blind at the end of her life and she had rosaries hanging around mm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's where I first picked that up. Yeah. And she had a lot, a lot of rosaries were just like that, mm -hmm. you know, just like that. Yeah. Who another, else we got? Another mother, um, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. Yay. She was like a teacher. St. Elizabeth Ann Seton was the first native born American to be canonized a saint. Yep. And a convert. And a convert. So be nice to the people that are outside of the denomination of Catholics out there, people. Ryan Shield. Yeah. <laughs> You're so mean. She, so was, mean. she was converted by sound doctrine, not by, <laughs> by willy-nilly tambourines. Okay. <laughs> and rain sticks. Yeah, rain sticks. <laughs> you got to have rain sticks. So St. Elizabeth Ann Seton was... Born in New York. Um, she married a, a rich New Yorker. She was in the upper society of New York, uh, of culture. Um, but then her husband died. She had kids, and then her husband died and kind of left her to her own devices. And it was a, it was a real struggle for her. How many her. kids she have? Oh. I forget, man. I think she had a lot of kids. She had a few. Not as many as Cabrera. Yeah. But who we're going to talk about. I'd love to talk about I don't. Her. I don't have that in front of me. But um, after that, she devoted her life to raising her children. But then she also did a lot of great things where she, she was in education. She was opening schools. Uh, she worked with... Um, she had a lot of money, too. Yeah. And she gave a lot of it away. Yeah. And yeah. she was really impactful in... In creating the Catholic education system in America, yeah. So again, there's yeah. that that instructive nature of mothering. She She's was a mother a of, her, yeah. of Catholic schools. Yeah. 
So she's a very important sage for all of us who went to Catholic schools. Yeah, there's Mother a, Cabrini and then <laughs> St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. Mm -hmm. I, that was my first parish as a priest was uh, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. Why are you throwing Mother Cabrini in there? Because she was also she very, very influential oh, in, in education. education in the United States. Yeah. And the first canonization of any saint yeah. related to America. But she was, she was sent over here by Leo, I think. And, uh, you know, she was ultimately canonized first, but... Mother Seton was the first American, American born. born. Catholic yeah, she, they, there's a shrine up in uh, Emmitsburg, yeah. and they have a uh, like they're headquartered for their religious order mm -hmm. uh, that she I, maybe helped find. I, I don't know, and it's massive. It is a massive building, and nobody's in it. I'm like, wow. that's a shame. What is going on here? You know, yeah. even the even the school, I believe that Mother Cabrini opened up in the city that my aunt went to. I think that school closed down as well. And, yeah. there's, you know, a lot of a lot of things like that, unfortunately. Yeah. So there is a um, now. No, so let's move on to another saint. Now, this saint is called the mother of saints. And that is Saint Amelia. Mm. You ever hear of her? No, Amelia. I should have heard of her, huh? Yeah, not many people have heard of her, but she's pretty extraordinary. Now, I'm sure you've heard of her children. You've heard of. Uh, Saint Basil. Oh yeah. You've, yeah. you've heard of Saint Macrina. You've, you've heard of Saint Gregory of Nyssa. Mm -hmm. You've heard of Saint Peter of Sebast. What? You've heard of Saint Theobosia, <laughs> right? No doubt she's okay. the, yeah. she, she is, is, got it. She is, is the this. mother of saints. Win a she, win a chicken dinner. Yeah. <laughs> she had eight <laughs> chicken and waffles. Eight <laughs> children, five of them became saints. Jeez. That's doing something right. <laughs> what yes. happened to the other three? That's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> They're all right, just, you know, probably saints, just not Canada. One of saints. them, I think, actually went to the seminary and then got kicked out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like somebody else we know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Saint uh, Amelia, mother of saints, pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, her children were doctors of the church and great uh, theologians and, and monastics, and, and, and they all had different charisms, too. So that leads you to believe that. It wasn't just a, a rote, single line towards religion. She really gave them the breadth of religions from theology to compassion to monasticism to service to uh, scriptural writing to composition of music. She gave her children a very well-rounded education and upbringing, and the results were pretty dramatic. That's tremendous. Yeah. So Cachita Cabrera, I don't think anybody's heard of her either. Right, and we didn't hear about her until yeah. Let's let's talk about a few years ago. Yeah, absolutely, uh, we have a personal story with yeah, her. We do. Yeah, some, I went on a trip to Our Lady of Guadalupe. Now, important to note, uh, <laughs> she is not yet a saint, but she is she is being canonized this year. Yeah, yeah. that's true. That's, that's true. very important to know. And you actually, cannot call her a saint right now. We've got a pilgrimage. Can. We've got a pilgrimage planned right after she gets canonized. The week and, after. The week after, and we're going to go visit her tomb. Yeah, been there two or three times. Uh, you know, I, I've never been around bones before. Like I've seen relics and stuff like that, like little reliquaries, but never been in a tomb. You know, it was at the bottom of St. Peter's, John Paul II's tomb. I mean, I was just like blown away with grace and it's in with, with her, you know, mm -hmm. at her tomb. Mm -hmm. We prayed a rosary last time we went, mm -hmm. uh, our company did. We brought all the executives and prayed a rosary right there at her tomb and it was beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Great. I'll never forget, you know, Delacrosse and I, we've actually talked about this trip before and yeah. we even uploaded a, a video of, of Delacrosse after his knee surgery and I'm pushing him around in a, <laughs> in a wheelchair. It's pretty hilarious. And he's wearing a fedora and stuff and sunglasses. And, but when we, when we were heading over to Conchita's tomb he went on to share with me his very first experience and it lit me up like a, you know, a Christmas tree because the way he was describing these grown men walking into the tomb area and then just weeping and, you know, their hearts being touched by her motherhood. Yeah. What was that experience like? Ryan? Yeah, it's motherhood, man. It was just like, it was just like boys crying in their mother's arms, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, I was actually not in there. I was actually in the, the, um, cause it's a retreat center. Mm -hmm. So I was like shopping for my kids and stuff like, yeah, oh, we're going to have mass in 30 minutes, whatever. Right. So I'm shopping for my kids and this guy's like, dude, you got to come down here and see this. I'm like, see what? Oh, you got to see all the guys. And they're all around the tomb. Everybody's crying. I'm like, uh, okay, go down there. And I'm just like, literally all these guys are just like their hands are on her tomb. It's a, it's a large tomb you know, 10, 15 feet long, you know, six feet wide. So there's 20 guys literally just, and everybody was in tears. 
And, and then I got to know her through, you know, praying there. And she does have this really beautiful, like edifying motherly love. And it's, it's powerful. It you know? really is. So, you know, I'm, I'm so excited and I enter into the tomb with Ryan and the place is empty. So we have the whole tomb to ourselves, and we spend time praying there. And something you've got to know about Kachita Cabrera is the fact that she loved priests and seminarians and she painstakingly was a mother to many but she was also a mother to many seminarians mm -hmm. as well yeah. um, and she really helped form seminaries and educate you know priests yeah. for a greater generation and then beyond but yeah. we have a we have a platform that we've worked on about you know about nine ten months ago a vocations platform for the universal church the English speaking church that we've really designed and we constantly created that vocations platform to her when we were there in prayer yeah. and we celebrated a mass. And do you remember that girl out of nowhere, this girl comes, she's Alma. Alma. She was there. And, and she came year. and she, she didn't speak any English, but when we started celebrating the mass, I shifted into like celebrating it in Spanglish. Yeah. And I was so convicted, you know, that, that she was struggling in her marriage and she was struggling in life. And I began to try to speak to that in my yeah. homily. And then afterwards, Ryan, I think you said you, sh you should go pray with her. Or no, something. I was like, you need to talk to her. Yeah. And I yeah. went into the sacristy and I was able to communicate with her and I'm not yeah. like fantastic with Spanish, but there was something there. It, I'm telling you what, it was so yeah. amazing. Yeah. And she began to weep Yeah, and I prayed healed. over her and there was such a, a healing that happened yeah. right next to the tomb of Cachita Cabrera. It was really one of oh, the most cool. magnificent experiences in Mexico city. She, yeah. she, she wrote a lot too, didn't so, she? Conchita Cabrera, her real name or full name was Maria Concepcion Cabrera Arias de Armida, <laughs> okay. right? Mm. And she was just known is Conchita. Um, she was married when she was 17. She was married for 22 years to her husband, Francisco, and then Francisco died mm -hmm. and left her as a, as a widow with children, with nine children, and her youngest was two years old. Mm -hmm. And that was, that, that's very difficult. And um, she, in her writing, she said that she entered into a spiritual marriage with Jesus at that point. Mm -hmm. And you said she wrote a lot. Her children have no recollection and, and when they talked about her, of ever seeing her write once, but her writings are 60,000 handwritten pages. That's as much or more as Thomas Aquinas. Mm, yeah. And her, and her children never saw her writing. Whoa. Yeah, That's she crazy. was probably like up at three in the morning or something. Right. I don't know. Yeah. She I wrote, mean, Thomas Aquinas had people writing for him. He was dictating to, to several people. Um, yeah. I mean, she had personal audiences with uh, Pius X. I mean, she was very. She was very well respected and she was a mother and a widow and, yeah. and she's a, one of the great mystics. Of and kids. one of her great books uh, that everyone should read is The Seasons of the Soul. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it, it, it's, it talks about the development of the soul in the, um, in the comparison to the way that the seasons pass, that in the springtime everything is sweet and easy and in the summer things are hard and burn up and in the fall things reach their ripeness. It's a great book. Very short, it's maybe 50 pages. Yeah. Everyone should read that one. Yeah. Which, by the way, thank you so much, Ryan, because he gave me a copy of that this morning. Yep. Good. I'm Good. looking forward to reading that. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. She's beautiful. All she these is women beautiful. are beautiful. Yeah. You know. So make sure that you're you're keeping an eye out and an ear out for the trip coming up. We'll be marketing that on the, on the show's page and then getting the word out. Um, because happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's yeah. Day. And, and it's also, you know, in the month of, of May. So, you know, we want to, we want to definitely, you know, um, just celebrate our mothers out there. And we're so glad that you join us each and every week, every Tuesday for the show and that you're supporting us and you're subscribing. And we thank you for our patrons out there that use the Patreon app. And, uh, you know, as we conclude this, I'm wondering if I could, uh, request, not the Inquisition? Ooh. Uh, motherly reprieve. I don't know. Call your mom and ask. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing my mother, she was Wait, tough because she had to be on. mom and dad. Hold on. I got a note here from Father Rich's mom that says, please excuse him from the Inquisition today. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely not for my mother. All right. We're going to we're gonna honor that one. <laughs> uh, thanks for joining we're us, everybody. Yeah. No, yeah, we, we're praying for you guys and we, we thank God for, for you and for our mothers out there that are and, listening. And, and to our wives who are also mothers, oh, yeah, to man. my wife, Kelly, I'm sure to Jen, your wife, Jen, yeah. uh, to our own mm -hmm. mothers, to all, you know, all the mothers out there really, uh, 
your motherhood is an incredibly important and fundamental aspect of humanity that its importance can never be written about enough and overstated enough. So happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Glory be to God. 